add to winning long or short positions? Well, there's always a temptation to become a triumphalist. But uh, on one notable occasion, I went on adding t to the position again and again. But that's not because I became more convinced about the original story. It was the story got better and better uh, as time went by. And so not merely was I not minded to sell the position, to close it, in whole or in part, I just felt I had to go on adding. They don't happen that often, and I thought this was a good one. When did you get out? Out of that particular position. Uh, generally? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure I can give you a satisfactory answer to that, but you'll recall that I mentioned to you that uh, when trying to work out what others are doing in the market, buying or selling or whatever, and uh, one, have to, one has to ask oneself uh, how will sub subsequent events unfold uh, in the eyes of the investing public and in particular in relation to the particular share in question. And I've made lots of mistakes on that, but I equally I've made one or two that are right. Uh, the share I had in mind, when you raised the point, was a company called Golden Prospect, which subsequently became Ambrian. Well, I can remember uh, discussing Golden Prospect with uh, its principal managers and shareholders in my drawing room in Knightsbridge about 20 years ago. And I then decided this was a terrific wheeze. I to be keen on gold and gold shares. And I knew, of course, that those uh, the managers were people whom I'd known for a long time and that they knew about gold shares. Uh, particularly a friend of mine, Richard Lockwood. Uh, and uh, Richard kept me informed as to how the company was coming along and he kept on saying, well, I don't know why the shares are so low but that they'll just go on lower because no one wants to buy the shares. And I kept on saying, Richard, Richard, I'll buy them, I'll buy them. And he said, well, just wait. And then those fools at uh, Equitable Life insisted upon selling their holding. I must say, that experience was very instructive. They had 13 million shares to sell. And... Uh, Instead of doing the sensible thing and waiting a bit, demonstrating some knowledge of the company and demonstrating some knowledge of fund management, they decided to sell 13 million, which they did at uh, three and three quarters. Well, I took my first lot of two million at that price and uh, Richard's funds took the other 11 million. And I said, uh, well, that's jolly good. I must have more. I must go and buy some more. And uh, he said, now, just wait. These chaps, if they want to sell, they'll come on and sell. But if they don't want to come on and sell, you're not going to get any stock. All you're going to do is force the price up against yourself. And you may even deter the other chaps' willingness to sell, which won't help you at all. But I said, OK, if you insist. Well. Uh, a few, a week or two later, uh, I think it was uh, Scottish Equitable uh, decided to sell. I can't remember now. It wasn't Scottish Widows, I think it was. Anyway, the fact is, the Scots came out at around six and a half p, and I was able to buy another couple of million. I don't know how many Richard got at this time, but it was certainly quite a lot. And uh, I asked him, well, what do we do with all this? And he said, well, there's still sellers around. They still want to get out. For instance, uh, one of the directors wanted to sell 800,000 shares. Uh, and I bought those from memory at about 12p, I think, something like that. And they were still very cheap. I mean, for a long time, uh, during this phase, uh, the cash per share, when there was no debt, Cash per share was tenpence a share, and you, however you had to look at it, the various mining prospects held within the company's portfolio had to be worth seven or eight pence a share. 
So there I was buying this huge discount, uh, if you like, Tobin's Q in this particular case was about 0.6, which was ridiculous. Uh, and I just went on buying. And people would ask me, well, what would I buy? I said, well, I'll tell you what I have bought. And it's a thin market, but I think you'll make money out of this one. And of course, um, we all did, did make money. In the end, Family Corkwell made about three and a half million pounds. I can tell you, I have made a lot of other blunders. Maybe not other blunders, I've made, I've made a lot of blunders which have lost cumulatively considerably more than three and a half million pounds. But I'm telling you, this one made the family three and a half million, and I'm, I've no objections to that at all. And as I say, it's down to Richard Lockwood, it's not down to me.